final meeting of the show. Uh, very good morning to our final whānau both here in the room and um, on our uh, YouTube live stream as well. I will open our uh, first formal council meeting of the year uh, with our council prayer and my te reo māori in English. Katuku mātou kia kaha mai ngā mārai ko whiri-whiri kia mō te kaunihira o te heko te ka ki te mahi me te ngā kau awaha, me te haka mahi i ngā pūkinga, me te mā tauranga i ratu i ngā wānanga, me ngā haka tauna ki haka tūrea i te tahi hapori, te mata tikana, e tūko tahi ana ngā kutu, ka haka piki anu i te oranga o tō tātou rohe, ka haka tau anu i ngā take o te rohe, i runga i te tika mi te pono. We ask that through Council's discussions and decisions, the representatives we have elected may govern the whānau district with imagination, skill and wisdom, to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of our district and solves the district's many problems efficiently and effectively. Amen. 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 We have uh, no apologies um, needed for this meeting, but I'll just acknowledge that Councillor Felicity Foy is joining us virtually, and I know that her son Lockie had surgery yesterday and is on the road to recovery. But we understand if you need to pop away to do some um, nursing duties, uh, we'll expect that and we hope he has a speedy recovery, Councillor Foy. We have a number of deputations, but just before that, I'll jump into my mural announcements. Uh, so it's a pleasure this morning to introduce our Te Reo Māori interpreter, Kāwati Wakeford. Uh, throughout this meeting, whether it be through our um, deputations or as elected members, if you would like to speak in Te Reo Māori, um, we will give time for Kawati to uh, interpret that into English as we go. Now, we are working on getting um, technology to kind of make this process a lot easier. So um, hopefully, because this will become the new normal for our council, which is very exciting, um, it'll be a matter of uh, whenever someone speaks in Reo, you can just pop the headpiece in and listen to it live in English as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that technology get up and running. Um, but until then, we're very uh, grateful to have you at the table with you, and I'll pass a little time over to you if you'd like to introduce yourself to your group. Morena e whānau, he uh, witere no Ngāti Uai, Ngāti Hine, Ngāti Rangi, um, Ngā Toro Mā Katoa Te Tai Tukero. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm a registered interpreter and translator under uh, Te Taura Whiri Te Reo Māori, the Māori Language Commission. And Amen. it's uh, really a great privilege to be here um, in this capacity. Kaua Te and I actually did the same year and went through school, different schools, but you know, at the same time. And so um, it was always a, a privilege to see Kaua Te at Ngāmanu Kōrero speech competitions where he took it out a number of years actually. He, the, you did Te Reo Māori section and English section one at the same time, didn't you, Kaua Te? Um, so yeah, it's, it's so great to see that you've passed your exams as well. And they're hard, they're not easy to, to get your um, interpreters exam through the Māori language Act. Uh, is a real undertaking and shows the skill and fear that you have in Te Reo. Well, welcome. Uh, just a few other things <coughs> from me. Um, I just want to acknowledge that uh, Monday gone was Waitangi Day, 183 years since the signing of Te Tiri Te Waitangi. And I just want to um, pass on my thanks to our Waitangi National Trust Board because for the first time that I'm aware, our council, <coughs> district council, was actually intimately involved and invited to participate in the commemorations at a formal level. So I want to thank the Waitangi National Trust Board for that. And of course, thank Ngāti Kawa and Ngāti Rahiri, um, our mana whenua in Waitangi, for the great job that I experienced firsthand, but also the many thousands who came to Waitangi this year um, experienced in terms of manakitanga, in terms of hospitality. So mihi nui ana ki a koutou, um, mm -hmm. Waitangi ki a koutou, ko to Ngāti Kawa e ki te anau i apu i te rumanei e tukuna waku nei ki runga i tō pō tātou e wini. Uh, last December, we aligned our formal council meeting calendar with the Maramataka Māori, the first of its kind for a, um, for a at a formal level for any organisation in Aotearoa, to my understanding, but also the first for a council. And so today, in my maramataki anyway, is oike, um, which is a moon which comes after the full moon phase. It is a good energy moon, of course, so hopefully that will be found throughout this meeting. But oike is also a give back day to the whenua. So 
um, it's the day that we set aside within the, the 30 phases of the moon mm. um, to give back to Papa Tuanuku. It's a really good day to do some spring cleaning, to clean up your gardens and things like that. Hopefully our meeting won't take too long and you'll get some of that sunshine um, this afternoon to do so. I also want to acknowledge uh, some of the announcements. Uh, of course, over Waitangi, we have um, there's tumbleweeds blowing in the streets in Wellington because all of our central government colleagues, all of the politicians are all up here in Northland. Um, we, have, we were invited um, to acknowledge the gifting back from the Coleman Fano of parking a park mm. just out of Taikohi here, one of the most significant uh, significant cultural and historic places to Ngāpuhi has been gifted back to um, the caretaking of Ngāti Ue Oneone and Ngāti Tautahi. And um, it was really great to participate in that occasion as well. But also <coughs> it marks um, the beginning of New Zealand history in schools as a core curriculum item. And so that part is going to take part, it is going to be a part of the local history that, um, that is taught here in Northern and for that to be gifted back in and for there to be funding available to um, put infrastructure in place there. We know that all of our uh, tamariki in the north will have that opportunity to go and learn the history of how important parking up are is uh, here in Northland. We also had an announcement from the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development in Kirikiri where they've purchased the site, which will see 56 homes uh, made available in our biggest town, um, a town which is facing a huge housing shortage, as are many of our other towns across the north and across the country. Um, but I just really want to uh, acknowledge the fact that we are seeing these public <coughs> through to us. Um, and I also understand that that site there will be, housing will be made available for first home buyers, uh, and affordable pricing brackets for those families too, which is always important. That comes on top of the 300 homes um, which we got funding for in Kawakawa and Kaikohe. Uh, very much celebrating the funding that's coming through to provide housing for the people of the North, but also acknowledging the fact that um, the Far North is a huge district. <coughs> there are areas in the Far North, and um, I've heard from people in Hokianga, from people in Whangaroa, and of course, people in Muri Benua, Kaitai, and, and further north who are hoping that they um, aren't left off the list. And so, conversations will be had in these spaces to see how we can ensure that we uh, bring the very vast uh, breadth of our district. Uh, finally, just a note that on item 7.10, the Parks and Reserves Bylaw Report, staff have brought to our attention the need to update two of the recommendations in this report. The update is an administrative matter. There is no change to the proposed bylaw itself or the substance of the report, and we will no doubt hear about that when we get to that item. Uh, other than that, just a huge welcome to all of my colleagues back to the table for this year. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the work that we do as a council um, this year. And without further ado, we will go on to our deputations. We have three deputations coming to council today. Uh, one is from Focus Pai here, one is from Business Pai here, and another is on climate change. Now to those of, um, to our manuhiri, to our visitors who will be uh, speaking as a part of the deputations, you have five minutes under our standing orders to do so. Um, Aisha will take a timer for me and will indicate at the, when there's one minute left. Um, and if we finish early, there may be an opportunity for questions from the members. Now, in, the, uh, in our last few meetings, I have been probably a little bit more lenient under our standard orders, and um, we're going to probably have a little bit more tough luck this year if we want to be able to get through our incredibly vast agendas within the time that we have available to us. So uh, I'll just ask the collective members to please respond to that file throughout the day. I have requested twice to speak. Right, if I'll ask one of our um, government schools to come over and have a cordial with you, we might be able to figure something out. But um, otherwise, we'll crack on with our first presentation. 
uh, and that is from Grant Hamish for Focus Pai here. Murena Tato, a Totai Kamika Quite, Kaike, Moko, Karakia, Akitatu, a Hurinok de Tebu, a Kote in a memo to Kaikira Tinitamiki of Kutu. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity. And I was here yesterday doing another Kopa Pa to Triti of Waitangi, but I'm here today as the uh, model representative for Focus Pai here. And these gentlemen to my right will be doing uh, most of the quarter. Uh, this is Charles uh, Grant and also Hamas here with us as well. Um, and just a, a brief that um, uh, there's, you've already agreed to um, the project of the water, Paihe waterfront development. Uh, and it's really good timing because this year, 2023, in April, from 13th to 17th, is the 200 year bicentennial of Paihe. So this project is all leading up into that, uh, which is all about uh, reconciliation. It's good relationship building, uh, good opportunities to share uh, the history of Te Tiri Te Waitangi Whakaputanga uh, with the motu, which we hope uh, that are going to all turn up uh, in the next couple of months. So that's me. I know we're short on time, so I don't want to take up too much. I'll just pass it on. Ka poi. Thank you, Nga Tikawa. Kia ora tātou. My name is Charles Parker and I chair the Business Association in Pai here. And my co-partner this morning, just to give a little bit of context uh, to one region of, of many in New Zealand, we have effectively 18 other regions competing for domestic and international visitation. So as a region, it's important that we present ourselves in a, in a tidy and, and attractive uh, setting because we're competing with other destinations for visitors. Uh, people are time poor and so our, our task is, is quite challenging to, to attract visitors to our region and to our town and the businesses and the offerings that we have. Uh, so as, as a business community uh, it's very important. Uh, tourism is the lifeblood of the industry in our town. It's what creates employment and, and economic revenue for the businesses as well as also creating a fantastic environment for those people who choose to, to live and live in the region. I'd also uh, like to point out that um, following the, the cancellation of the waterfront project, many of us have invested huge amounts of time and energy in that project and trying to uh, get it across the line. And unfortunately, after what was probably two years of, of effort, that, cancel, that project had to be cancelled due to the, the rising costs. It just became uh, unachievable with the budgets that we had. There was quite a bit of division in the community and, and we saw this, this project as, as a way of rebuilding and reuniting our community. Uh, the process that we've gone through, through using uh, our creative communities and getting the community involved a weekend of planning in January it's all about trying to bring the community together. Uh, we, we had a very united community uh, 10 years ago under Grant's leadership. <coughs> uh, some of that had, had dropped off and we were keen to reignite that. And hence, uh, we've used this, pr this project as a way to bring the community together and, and actually work on our town together and do the mahi. Uh, and that's, well, as, a as a community, we've won awards for our to work together for the, for the good. Just lastly, a lot of the infrastructure we're talking about, the waterfront, um, Manu Kaihuia, the, the otherwise known as Tamaki Hill, and Te Horo, uh, Horotutu on the waterfront, are areas which are currently uh, final district council assets, which are in need of quite a bit of work and maintenance. And this project is going to wrap up all of that requirement and complete that work as part of it. So I'll hand over to Grant now, he's going to continue. Thank you. Kia ora. Um, thank you for having us here today. So just to be clear, uh, we've sort of taken the liberty of combining the 10 minutes for the three speakers, just so we can get as much information across as we can. I'm coming from this as a, from a Focus Pie here community perspective. Um, I was very lucky enough to chair Focus Pie here for quite a long time and was involved in the original development of Port Tutu. Um, and I just want to be clear on several different points. Um, I know we're time short, so I'll just bullet point them and be happy to take any questions. The community is aware of the signed funding agreement that Focus Pai has with the Whanau District Council regarding this improvement. 
that was initiated in the middle of last year uh, and, as Charles pointed out, in a way of looking to uh, provide some um, something for the community that they were promised for the beautification of the waterfront that went with the initial breakwater development. When that was cancelled, the suggestion with the previous council was that we could combine the beautification side and upgrade current infrastructure. So they are aware of that. We've held social pinpoint run by council for people to input ideas on how this money can be spent. And then we held a workshop in the middle of January, which was really successful. And it was great to see uh, Deputy Mayor Stratford there as well joining us. We had up 70 odd people there working as a community to bring the ideas forward. We think being a community led project, we're going to deliver a huge amount of bang for the council's buck. Um, Focus Pai has proven over the last 10 or 12 years that we have an ability to deliver projects uh, far in excess of what we spend, simply because we have such community, great community buy-in, the community comes together and supports that happening as well. Um, and I'd just also like to point out Focus Pai here, the community has raised $300,000 that we're adding to the pot as well, with the intention of growing that pot. So the total. 1.7 from Final District Council, which was already in the LTP and allocated for these particular projects. Focus Pi here is adding 300,000 to that, and our intention is to take these ideas and springboard that to further so we can do more development. And as Charles pointed out, a lot of that is going to be Final District Council <coughs> infrastructure there, and we're upgrading and improving. So, you know, we are going to get a lot of bang for our buck out of it. We've proven what we can do with the Waitangi Mountain Bike Park. We started with 70,000 from Council. We turned that into 2.4 million and have a fantastic asset for the community to use now. We intend to do the same here. So we're not just talking about Porotutu. We're talking about Nita Nui, the bluff as well. And that is in dire need of improvement. It is in a really bad place at the moment. So anyone that would like to come for a walk with us around there, we'd be happy to show you that. It is really, really sad. Um, <clears throat> And as I pointed out, I just want to be super clear, this funding is not new funding that we're asking for. This is funding that was previously approved in LGP and through final Holdings, uh, they made a commitment, the Council made the commitment through final Holdings that the community could beautify the waterfront when the project, the, when the development was finished and the money of 1.7 million was allocated for that beautification process. So we're not intending of really building anything new, we're just fixing up what is really in dire need of it. And, um, just to also be clear, because we have that signed funding agreement from last year, we went ahead, organised the community workshops, we have also let out a lot of contracts and we have already begun works, which is currently, because of the, uh, the need to come back to Council now on the 9th of February, Focus Pi here has underwritten those contracts that have already been let out to keep the project moving so that we finish by March 31st in time for the bicentenary in April. So we have had to keep moving. I just want to be really clear that we've already done that. Happy to take any questions if there are. Hopefully I haven't held anyone up too long. Got two and a half minutes. Uh, interested members, are there any questions you'd like to ask of either Natakawa, uh, Hamish or Charles? Chura, Community Board Chair. Thank you, Member. Um, just in the agreement grant on page 11, um, just clarification on the um, wording there, please, that was highlighted in green. Might be a typo, didn't quite make sense to me. So, I think what it's, what it's referring to there is that uh, some of the major improvements that are going to be required at Inui which is the road subsiding and the footpath subsiding, we're going to have to bring in uh, NZTA and other parties that are going to also have to contribute to this as well. I don't think there's an expectation that all of this funding is going to go into fixing NZTA infrastructure at all. It would need to be, their area would need to be completed first. Nihanui is set aside as a 12 to 18 month longer project simply because of the collaboration required with Hapu and also with other government agencies in order to deliver that. We can't deliver it with this funding. This funding is for the information that we wish to share, not for the rebuilding of NZTA infrastructure. So that's another typo, isn't it, to read? I believe so. It's that... Specifies that mean another party it just doesn't make grammatical. Oh, I mean, you would need to speak with someone else more about that. But the intention is that we have yeah. collaboration between other agencies as well. There will be a lot more funding required than what we've currently got. Thank you. Um, <coughs> 
community board chair ward i'll ask that you bring that up when you put that mic to me as well um we've got 30 seconds probably time for another question if there is one <coughs> councillor how can you do it uh, do a man of that, Kauni. Yeah. Uh, the arrival of uh, Henry Williams, 1823, and the establishment of the church, um, missionary station down there. And Takata Tua, um, Himomo Afi, Nahuki Mo, uh, To Hapu, Waitani, Iroti Tene Kapapa. Work in progress. Huh? A work in progress. Kia ora. I'll just ask Interpreter Wakeford for the benefit of those in the live stream who can't speak to you to do <coughs> give a reeks to summary of um, Councillor Halkyard Harawida's comments. Then. Two questions. Um, the first uh, clarification whether it's purely the vice attorney for Paihia itself, that's in question, or is it um, for uh, the 204? 2014 mm -hmm. um, celebrations, uh, and it was just clarified that it was around uh, the uh, 1823 Williams uh, bicentennial establishment of the Paikia. And question number two how uh, was is there any help for the Hapu at Waitangi? Thank you, and Super Bear Wakeford. Uh, that's all of our time. Thank you for your deputation, gentlemen. We will jump <laughs> straight into our next deputation from. Clear and clear apologies. I actually didn't ask how to pronounce your surname, so please introduce yourself so I can learn it too. Who has a five minute deputation to us on the <coughs> path? I'm going to you. Uh, uh, my name is Albert Apiata, also known as uh, Hama. I'm Tara Dalakarapu. I'd just like to say. <coughs> We can do wonders. And I've taken note, especially for the betterment of, uh, of our people and the community as a whole. I've just taken note of the corridor of our moon, the energy. <coughs> I just want to involve the speakers. So, Thank you for allowing us to come here today. Just to reinforce that uh, working together and we do want this. Um, and that there is um, standing orders are often superseded by tikanga. And so I uh, thank you for that acknowledgement and we will jump back into our tikanga kaunihira and um, my name is Claire Ganomsha, and um, I'm speaking on behalf of Extension Rebellion and Restore Passenger Rail. These uh, speeches are meant as a reminder of the climate <coughs> and ecological emergency we declared. They are a way to keep you up to date with the climate collapse we are all living through and up to date with the actions that need to be taken. Our first speech with this council is an opportunity for us to revisit where the scientific consensus stands. In 2015, at the COP21 in Paris, um, world leaders agreed that we should strive to be under 1.5 degrees of warming by the end of the century. Only seven years later, or eight years, I think now, and um, the latest models are now showing that we will reach these temperatures in 2030 already, and that it is now unavoidable. If we can't avoid reaching 1.5 degrees anymore, we still have a slim chance to avoid two degrees of warming, but um, it will require urgent changes. Why are these temperatures a limit not to pass? We are today at 1.2 degrees of warming, and you must have already seen in the media the constant stream of record floods, fires, and droughts. 
As a consequence, besides the sheer destructive power of these events, we are losing harvest at a record pace, threatening global food security. <laughs> Considering that temperatures will keep rising until at least 2040, even if we act, it is safe to assume that these events will get worse. We will need to adapt, but um, you can only adapt to so much. If we go past 1.5 degrees of warming, the damages to our infrastructures and to our food systems will be unmanageable. This is why our request to you all today is for you to make emissions reductions and environmental protection the priorities. The scientific consensus is that to stay within 1.5 degrees of warming, we need to at least half our emissions by 2030. Mayor Tipania, we hope to have ongoing communication with you and your team to help move our district towards a safe future for our Mokofuna. <coughs> Some of the tangible actions we would like to explore with your council are restore passenger and freight rail from Thunderay <coughs> to Oteria and Opua. Rates rebates for negative carbon emitters. Deregulation of small scale food production systems and tiny homes. Restructuring of the, waters, of the wastewater systems to utilize as precious fertilizers rather than send out to sea and lose all the nutrients. Facilitating, uh, facilitating of community gardens. Restoration and creation of shared trails with enhancement of cult cult sorry, cultural history reconnecting marais and ancient routes for walkers, bikes and horses. We are looking forward to a progressive, positive relationship with Council for the sake of our community, Papa Tuanuku, and all the wonderful creatures we share our lives with. Thank you all. Thank you, Lord. And um, I'll just keep you there for a second. We've got a spare minute if any of the members had questions. A lot of support. I saw a lot of nodding heads. Invitation <coughs> to us, Claire. Thank you very much. Sorry, I couldn't see you with these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's either the text or you guys. I don't know. I'm too both. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for the time. You're very welcome. Now we have a late deputation and apologies that that wasn't received. Um, that, that didn't make it to me. Hi, Hinderay. But you have five minutes. Hinderay. Hinderay. Aroha mai. And uh, um, time is yours. I mean. Good morning, um, I'm going to speak to page 25 and 7 of the five-year review work on improvement project. Um, down on the second paragraph down, September 822. The Hapu of Ngati Rahini attended that meeting. We were told in no uncertain terms. This month is only the pay. The community groups, the next page, uh, um, paragraph down, the community groups focus by here and business by here. They do not make up the community groups by here. Down further, Waitangi January 14 and 15, there was a, uh, a workshop held at Waitangi. Why have a meeting in Waitangi when we have already made it clear? In the, September 8th uh, meeting that the money was only for Kaihe. And yep, money for the work in attendance. Um, Ngāti Rāhiri Hapu has not had a view about this cocoa. And I will just go down to um, the recommendation. I totally oppose any money that's been handed over. The Hapu Ngāti Rāhiri provide many submissions opposing this this development, identifying the cultural and environmental issues affecting our foreshore, Moana and Birdland. And you all know Waitangi is in the coastal area of Kwaiti. Yet when it comes to big money to beautify, all of a sudden, Waitangi is not Kwaiti. 
to say Manapino Hokaina Marai in the documentation does not mean consultation. Okay, I want to move on to page 26, the second paragraph. You know, they talk about uh, a report on potential projects across, across the district that the $5.4 million could be used for. That report should have been presented at least to the people at the September Hoo. At the September Hoo. As of today, the Hapu of Ngati Dahi have not got a copy of that report. And once again, in the next paragraph, same two groups now get to draw up a partnership agreement on how to spend the money and also how to allocate it further along. You know, uh, so we've got local hapu being used here, naming the lots of hapu representatives. Atirani hapu have never had a hapu brief on this kaupapa to elect a hapu representative. Further on down, um, where the mayor worked with the community representatives to establish a working group. We've got a community stakeholders. We know who the community stakeholders. So far, we only hear focus player and business player. The local hubbub, well, once again, we have not had a hubbub group and, and mandated a representative for this co -op. The lighting improvements that are getting spoken about. Do you know how many times Waitangi has asked for light for security and safety reasons? Many a time. Still nothing happened. We can't even ask at this table. It's strange. Place making design workshops that were, that, um, were held in January with a completion date of April for a celebration. And yet, and yet, there have been so many Māori tāngā offered at the Hapu Ngāti Gāsini that know nothing about it. So, one minute, I'm going to get down to option one. I do not approve as Ngāti Gāsini and Hapu have not been notified or participated in this program. Option two, I support that this agreement be declined. Option three, I support to review this project. This will enable the Hapu of Ngāti Dāri the opportunity to participate fully. So many disadvantages recorded, but nothing of said Māori. And the recommendation option is to is to approve the agreement and I'm opposing the agreement. And I will take that back to the Hubble Group. These, these are the recommendations to oppose this application. I will be taking it back to the Hubble Group in Nazi Dublin on Saturday. Then I'll be fine here, We don't have time for any questions, but uh, apologies again that your deputation request was missed. And thank you for the deputation. All right, um, to our Manuheri, you're very much welcome to stick around. I intend to break at about 20 past 11 for um, uh, morning tea, so you're welcome to stick around for that if you'd like to. Otherwise, we will <coughs> to our uh, first. Our first motion of this meeting that is 5.1 on page 6, a notice of motion, Hakaputana Day, the 28th of October. The motion is that the Farmer District Council stand reference to October 28th exclusively acknowledge and delete the inclusion of the New Zealand Colony Award. That was moved by Councillor Halkiad Harawira and seconded by. Councillor Preskovich, uh, I am going to pass the time on to you, Councillor Halkiad Harawira, to speak to your motion. Kia ora. 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 Kia ora.
Te Putakeo Te Devi. I was elected that day as a councillor for um, Māori uh, and Te Putakeo Te Devi. I support this motion uh, and for council. Uh, so we don't, don't dilute uh, the importance of this day and the celebration. Uh, and as a council, we need to rethink uh, this issue. Good, I'll go over to Councillor Haukiaid Harawira for uh, response. Kapoi, we will apologies, Councillor Kapo, your hand did up did go up too late. But we will um, go to a vote now. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? Abstentions. Abstentions from uh, Councillor Court and from Councillor Ramage, please. Kapoi, we will move on to item 6.1. <coughs> Previous minutes on page seven of our agenda. Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. I'm just I'm a bit lost here. We're up to the minutes. Point of order. Yep, please What's state your, your point, point of order. order. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stratford. Uh, we'll ask you to clarify your point of no, order. No, I just wanted to bring up um, last October when we were all elected to council, we had a poor fitting at Whitehead on the Marae there. And there were some great Māori speakers who spoke. And um, I was quite in, intrigued by the whole thing. It was, um, as I said, we had some great speakers. You know, I can name a couple of Icy shortly, Shane Jones. And I'm, at least three of, them, of those speakers said, we're not here for one, we're here for everyone. Councillor Rauch, I was asking you to please clarify what your point is. Well, I'm are. trying to say, you know, we're, we're talking Māori and it's going to be translated into English. And to me, this is time consuming. And I'm going to say, you know, we, we've got a lot of problems in the final district oh, council. I'm going to have to shut you down there, Councillor Raddich. Unbelievable. Does allow for anyone to speak either of no, any one of our on. three on. languages. Thank you. You must remember that I've also got Māori in the um, mayor. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Raddich. Item 6.1, confirmation of previous minutes. The recommendation is that Council confirms the minutes of the Council meeting held on the 15th of December and our extraordinary Council meeting on the 20th of December as a true record. Can I have a move for this motion? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stratford. A second that? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Vucic. Uh, Deputy Mayor Stratford, did you have anything you wanted to no, thank pick you. up? Councillor Vucic? Open the floor. Yes, Councillor McNally. Yeah, I have two things. Um, six, eleven, temperature speed limit. I thought I'd vote against that. What you do with the speed limit being extended? I thought it should follow the process of the speed limit review. I don't care whether it's changed or not. I just like to make the point. And the second one is uh, 5.2 road maintenance. We're covering every year. Stretching. Second, the resolution and then vote of the future. We will just find the 5.2, please, and that is on page. <laughs> Understanding orders, you can move or second an item and vote against it. So thank you for picking that up, though. And would you like the record to state that you were against? No. Yeah, but I just, I, I just think the process should have been followed. Thank you, Councillor McNeil. We'll ask our governance skills to um, maybe watch back on that one, just uh, on our uh, records, just to double check that. But otherwise, to pay close attention, please our wonderful governance skills to our votes today. All right, it has been moved and seconded. I haven't had any indication of further comments. I'll um, put this to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, any abstentions? The motion is carried. Thank you. Councillor Foy, because of the <coughs> slight lag in our stream, if you wouldn't mind voting by through the comment section for our items, our uh, governance skills can pick it up through there. Thank you very much. 
We'll now move to item 7.1, Bikey Waterfront Improvement Project, and that's on page 25. The motion is that council approves the allocation of $1.7 million towards waterfront improvements for Paikia as per the attached agreement for the Paikia Waterfront Improvement Project. Uh, I'll ask for a move for this motion. Thank you, Councillor Cork, a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Tomovic. Councillor Cork, uh, sorry, did we have, um, Nicola, did we have any staff? Janice, did we to speak to this? No, sir. Okay. Uh, so we've got one of our general managers, uh, Roger Eckers, who is in a moon group, so we are going to allow him to speak from where he's sitting, and if you raise your voice, Roger, the um, speakers will be here. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Nicola's not here, um, so I'll pick up. Uh, so uh, this is a paper that, that's been put forward um, to uh, make the approval of the transfer of funds from um, the council um, five year um, uh, um, project was for, for the branch of sea wall and the <coughs> so that, that project got cancelled. Um, so this is about um, some administration around making that transfer and the delegation. So there is a framework that was that you've heard about today. Um, and this is fundamentally about that money and bringing it to council um, because of the, the quantum of the, um, of the money that they have to from one project to another. Thank you for the upgraded council report. Is moving with the motion? Would you like to speak to this? This is the nature of the report. I'd like to commend the author of the report. Uh, notwithstanding what we've heard this morning from the uh, deputations, the money was allocated primarily through the Provincial Growth Fund to address the stormwater impact of the Paihia foreshore and the ongoing impact that it has on Crown and Council-owned infrastructure. When the contracts came in, the budgets uh, were exceeded by nearly double. So unfortunately, the project had to be cancelled at that time, the council determined to go out and host some public hui and talk to the community about how they could reallocate some of that funding to deliver on some town beautification and safety projects. They have done that, and the recommendation here today supports that. And in support <coughs> of the recommendation is the agreement, which you will note at one on page 31 requires the group to work in good faith and establish a working group to enable collaborative delivery, including final district council staff, key community stakeholders, focus by here, business player, by here and local hapu. The money is targeted for Pai here. It is not meant, it's never meant to be more broadly spread than that. This is an offset to the federal project to address the uh, imminent threat to Paihia waterfront and safety improvements. So while I understand the concern if you live slightly outside the area of benefit, um, there will be other mechanisms to capture their concerns with regard to lighting. I'll leave any closing in case you have uh, questions. I have a question of staff. Um, and I'm using the fact that I get to run the show to just butt in before we go to you, Councillor Radich. Is there scope within this agreement just based off the deputations we had this morning to change the wording there to ensure that there is a hapu representative from both Ngāti Rahiri and Ngāti Kawa? Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility as a way of ensuring that there is from both of our local hapu at, on that working party? So um, just to respond to that, um, to the, yeah, um, is um, from what I understand, um, is the colour um, is um, on folks by here um, to represent the hapu. No. Um, and um, and from, from what I understand, that's how it's been set up. And so he is tasked with ensuring that there's full hapu representative from both of those um, um, to be included. I think what I'd say to that, um, Roger, is that today we heard that actually that's not the case. So I just want to, mm. because I want this project to have every success, mm. I'm trying to find a mechanism um, where we still progress with this, but where we ensure that we do have both of our local 
a group heard at the table for this working group. What I asked was, is there scope to, as uh, when we vote on this now, maybe through an amendment, that we reword this to say that um, there is representation from both Ngāti Kawa and Ngāti Rāhi. In response to that, I would say the agreement would need to be reworded um, to make that change. So it could be like a stipulation pending the rewording and re-signing of the funding agreement to include this, something to that effect. Uh, Councillor Radic is second of this motion to join us back to it. I'll open to the floor. Thank you, Community Board Chair Ward. Thank you, Fumiko. I had been involved um, on this working party group like, from the second or third meeting uh, and am and, and well aware of, of the site visits and the workshops that have been held and am in support of this um, as along the lines of what Councillor Court has um, echoed before me. My concerns um, are around some of the wording in the report, but in particular the staff assessment on page 30. Um, I actually don't think a copy of and paste of my representation as a community board member on that working party group and the comment underneath in relation to the implications for Māori and whether they have uh, decisions you know, are significant actually um, <coughs> is, is correct. I think it's it's perhaps an error and that the it should have been made clear in there that it was um, perhaps Mana Whenua or one half who on that working party group. As I understand it, Ngāti Kawa sits um, as a Māori representative on Focus Plain and not as a Hapu representative. And I think sometimes there is confusion in the um, Ngāti Kawa, the Hapu, and Ngāti Kawa Tatua, the, the individual person, because it is his name. So I just wanted to clarify that. And the um, Ngāti Rāhia have not, uh, Rāhiri, have not been included in the um, on-site meetings and discussions. And the first day of the placemaking workshop that we hold at Waitangi, there was actually a big hui on and there were many people Sorry. that were unable to attend that. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. I think it's really important moving forward uh, that we actually do include both hapu, particularly um, in the sensitive areas uh, we're going to be dealing with Mihanui, which is known as the bluff. And um, that's going to probably take 18 months of consultation. And I would like to see much more inclusiveness in our community moving forward. Thank you, Community Board Chair Ward. I will just uh, uh, just double check with our acting chair, Janice, that those comments made about the, um, our compliance schedule, especially around the Community Board and Māori, uh, taken on to be fed back to our staff for our reports. Um, we'll go to Councillor Research. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. I, I just had a question to start, a little bit of clarification. From what I understand, I know this project for the waterfront development um, didn't pass, and the 5.84 million was council share. The 8 million from PDF uh, is no longer there. So this is all council money, just so that we please that correct? Yeah, and of that, of that 5.8 or 1.7 is going to be moved. Also, to be clear, that council money put in there is district funded. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, so basically, um, all of this money is coming across the district to you help know, fund this project. I've been saying all that, though, I agree with the 1.7, but I am concerned, just having heard this. Um, um, Speaker, that and I'm, I'm a great believer in an Auckland community being involved, that they are not all involved. So I, I agree with Mr. Mayor with your uh, changes there, and I support that as uh, a uh, you know, Thank you, Councillor Vesic. I've had some feedback from staff that there is scope to provide an amendment to this, so I will. Move an amendment to this original recommendation that Council approves the allocated allocation of $1.7 million towards the waterfront improvements for five year, um, subject. subject to the, uh, the inclusion and re signing of the agreement to.
to stipulate representation on the working group from both Ngāti Kawa Papu and Ngāti Rahiri Papu for the Paihia Waterfront Improvement Project. So that's been moved by myself and seconded by Council of Research. Would anyone like to speak specifically so to that amendment? Mm -hmm. Oh, Councillor yeah, Kappa. I totally agree with the caller that's been um, discussing this topic. I think the, uh, the term around the representative of the public really needs to be clear so that, that, uh, that both hapu are electing someone to stand in the position as opposed to as per a who, and, and that's where the confusion can become open. It would be great if those two hapu have a who and then they nominate someone. Thank you, Councillor Kappa. Would anyone else like to speak to the amendment? Councillor Court. Um, well, I appreciate the sentiment. I'm worried if this may potentially just derail it. Not because there's not willingness to have the conversation, but because the projects have already been clearly identified. And the projects are lighting improvements, setting paths to improve the waterfront ambience, water and safety rails, lighting mural, mural and informational storyboards. Uh, so when it talks about that on page 26 of bullet points A, B and C, are we setting this group up to go out and relitigate and potentially put the contracts that have already been leased at risk? I think moving forward, it's really good, but I would be very concerned if this stalled the project that has been stalled for many, many years. That's my concern. Thank you, Councillor Court. Councillor Rakina. We're not here to the fucking up or really put a kaikoni in a kappa. Marotu in a haka panuni tanga, ma awa haku erua, a haka ingwa, koai ma, he kaikoro, he kanohi moti haku, a kore poe he koai awai, a kam to pia kaidera to tahi wahanga. Kia koe whakatōroa i te whakapanoni tanga me te haina tanga o te kaunihira me ngā hapu me focus paihia. Kia mutonu ki te kaupapa e haere ake nei. Thank you. In touch with the way to support what the Councillor Kapa can see, the hapu themselves to be the electors of representatives for this working group. Uh, and for that, the hope is that that process, through that, uh, the process could be speedy uh, to find a resolution. Any other elected members like to speak to this amendment? Councillor Kiskevich? Uh, can I ask a question? No, you can't. You can ask a I, I, I would, uh, I just noted that I'd like to support what, what Ian said. Uh, I don't think the, the process should be hindered or slowed down by the election of Kaikoura. If the, if the Hapu were going to elect the Kaikoura, I think the Kaikoura be highly to that the Kaikoura should continue and uh, not be derailed because there's a one or two Hapu Kaikoura at the end of the day. We, um, we run our Rangatira Tanga now and our autonomy, but at the same time, it's economic development. And if it's going to be slowed down because one of the Hapu want a Kaikoura to <coughs> get the A to G, and ensure that when these we in town are taking place, that they front and they see their people, so um, so they can have voices on those on those boards and on those working groups. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Kleskovich. Councillor McNally. <coughs> um, I'd just like, if we look at what the original focus was, it was build breakwaters and other stormwater protections. So with the new work that's outlined in ABC, which will become, I guess, part of the renovation schedule, they're going to be at risk. Um, I've seen this all the damage because I was the foreman on building the deck alongside, and it had been up just really, and it blew the entire footpath um, from the what was the original car park, which is now Horatu, it blew six feet. Um, uh, screwed down decking, just threw it in the um, power park. So the, the <coughs> are huge. I just wonder what risk we're adding to at our budgets by having to replace. 
Thank you, Councillor McNally. Um, just as a yeah, way of a Deputy Minister. Sure. Enough. Just in time. Just wanted to add my two cents worth because I did attend the workshop and where we got to uh, with um, lots of rounds and very uncomfortable um, wānanga in that space. Um, it was quite surprising what, what was happening in various groups and we all ended up on the same page for the priority. So um, <coughs> the part, you know, next to the helicopter pad is where I, you know, where we, that's a priority. It's an ugly... Councillor, um, Deputy Minister, 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 I'll ask you to speak to the amendment, please. Oh, yes. I'll save this for the next part yes, then. Please. Thank you. Thank you. So we are voting on the amendment and I'll ask the um, governance girls to put that up on screen so everyone can see. Now, I, I don't, as a way of a right of reply to my amendment, I don't think that uh, the stipulation within the agreement to include um, a Nazi Rahiri voice in the working group is going to derail any of the progress in the space. If anything, it potentially will help the progress because we've heard today through a deputation through Fai Nifare that Nazi Rahiri are in opposition to some of the scope. Now, whether or not they're at the table, they're still going to want to be heard in these spaces. I, I think that this is a um, one of the many lessons that we will have as council around when we have <coughs> such as this. We ensure that we um, are getting a broad range of voice that our staff are ensuring that Hapu representatives will be that we have significant projects like this are all represented from the get-go and it doesn't take coming to a table like this for us to identify something like that. And while I know that there are internal hapu politics that come into play with things like this, if we can do as much as we can as a council and with our staff and as elected members to ensure that we capture the broader scope of the voices that need to be heard in terms of projects like this, it will save us getting to an amendment on at sort of like the 11th hour um, like that I've put across here. I, I don't think it will stall any of this project, but I think it's important to have that voice represented. Um, I'll put it to a vote. All those in favour? Good morning. Good morning. Um, apologies, Councillor Vucic, you're welcome to speak to the substantive motion, but it has been put to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? The amendment has been carried. It will be form a substantive motion now. And we'll go to Council of Yes, so where was I? Where we got to in the Wananga was um, Nihonui with its, um, you know, history and um, creating more visibility because at the moment when we walk past you know if you don't know it's there um, you don't even notice when you don't walk up so one of the goals from from the day was that we make that more visible and take away the eating area because that that's inappropriate it's tapu um, and, and make it make it more accordant <coughs> on why why it's significant um, so yeah, I, I <coughs> probably the number one thing that I really want to see ha happen and you know, the funding prioritised there. But I do understand that the lighting <coughs> that Pai here has along the waterfront that has become quite iconic does need upgrading, needs replacing, and yeah. So I and this this trust has a history in our community of not being um, very good at um, all its relationships in the community, but definitely punches above its weight in being able to deliver um, outcomes for people in Paihia and, and our visitors. You know, they, they make 30K go 10 times further than, than anybody else. And um, yeah, so we, we can't, can't take that away from that from them and hopefully with this new resolution on the table we're able to use you know leverage off the money that we're giving them to be able to 
get some outcomes that our council hasn't been able to achieve for um, Ngāti Koua and um, Ngāti Dāhiri. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister Chapman. Um, before we go carry on with the speaking order, now apparently Mayor Carter, who was you know, substantially uh, commented on within this report, just so everyone knows it, that he was the mayor at that time, um, took it upon himself to sort of circumvent some of our standing orders. Uh, now we'll turn a quick catch up with our governance groups. And as this is a substantive motion, it does need a new mover and seconder, which is something I was unfamiliar with. So I'll ask for a mover of the new substantive motion, which is the original motion plus the amendment. We've got the epitome Stratford and it's seconded by Council of Research. Thank you, Aisha. And we'll go to you, Council of Research, is seeking to speak to the substantive yes. motion. Yeah, I, I, I support it as a before. Um, the mayor did mention some, uh, some of the things. One is Corona uh, Focus Party has the ability to punch full above its weight. They have not, had, in, in the past, um, consulted widely, I believe. And to see, the, see both the community now being involved, uh, the community will be essentially putting a statement around and saying, look, this is what we want to see going forward. I believe that uh, they will punch well about <coughs> their past performance and will achieve more with the money that we actually give them. I'm also aware that we are struggling to keep rates down, and this though won't have a major impact, as I see on rates, at 1.7, um, because the capital works. But it will deliver a lot to that community. So, um, yep. Thank you, Councillor Research, to speak to the substantive motion community board chair board. Thank you, Mimoka. Just some clarification um, around the project um, from some of the comments I've heard at the table. The lighting, um, some of it has actually been done, that you're referring to in A, and it's replacing our waterfront rusted fittings, have been um, upgraded and um, coated and, and new lights and things put in them due to the rust. This is staged. This, this, I, I would like to um, for council to look at having a discussion around approving the funds and how much can be pushed out into the next financial year. And I support the amendment based on the fact that we are only looking at Hora Tutu, which is already in place. It's an upgrade of our place, Hora Tutu, on the Paia waterfront to the left. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, that's the only area we're referring to at the moment to be done by April for the bicentennial. I don't think that's clear in the room. Then I would like to see the um, Tuhapu represented um, with Nihanui in particular. That's 18 months of consultation. So a, a timeline with this would have been very helpful to give um, application. And I don't see any reason why both Hapu can't be brought on board moving forward. And I don't see that's going to endanger the um, project at this point. So just hopefully that will help clear things up. Thank you. I've had three speakers in favour of the substantive motion. I'll ask for a speaker against it. None will put it to vote. Thank you. All those in favour of the substantive motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any, abs any abstentions? Recorded, Councillor McNally? The motion that substantive motion has passed. We'll move on to item 7.2 on page 34. Stormwater issues at 324 at Highway 10 in Cable Bay. The recommendation is that Council approves expenditure of up to $300,000 to undertake a project to decommission the existing stormwater reticulation from the property located at 323 State Highway 10 and for new reticulation into the State Highway 10 itself. Can I have a move before this motion? No, I'll move that. Thank you, Councillor Radic. Seconder. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stratford. Councillor Radic, would you like to speak to this? Yeah, pretty sure I've been involved in this for a few years. In actual fact, I thought got all settled. But, you know, everything's ready to go, so I think the property owners that it's been affected is, will be very, very happy with the outcome to get this thing done. Thank you, Councillor Radic. Deputy Mayor Stratford. Yeah, I'm happy to support this, and I'm just um, concerned that it doesn't state 
report how much stormwater reserve there is. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that would be helpful if we've got a reserve and we're going to be using that rather than unbudgeted funds. Um, yeah, how much is there? We have $4.9 million in our stormwater reserve. Thank you. That's wonderful. Open to any other members who would like to speak to this motion. Thank you, uh, Council. I'm not going to support the motion. I don't think as a district we can afford to be spending quantities of $300,000 on one individual property. When reading the report, it's quite clear there's not a clear indication that it is the council's liability. The council is at fault. It seems that the entire property was from a landslip that occurred in 2003. To me, that's Earthquake Compensation Commission. That's got another name. I can't think what it's called. The Earthquake Commission are responsible for claims where landscape damages infrastructure within a certain distance of a house and private insurance. As this pipeline goes right through the middle of the person's private dwelling, I think council's been used as a soft target for ratepayer funds to address this. I would prefer that it was tested in court because I think this sets a very dangerous precedent moving forward for the right players to keep working out sums of this magnitude. Thank you, Councillor Court. I'll ask um, Acting Chief Executive Smith if perhaps legal have had their eyes over this, if Carla could comment at all, or I'm happy if that's not the case. <laughs> been alongside Andy and his team since the beginning of it, um, and this is the proposal that has been supported by legal. Do you have any specific questions for me? It's plenty of No, that's helpful. Thank you, Carla. Any other elected members like to speak to this? We'll put it to a vote. Councillor McNally. Yeah, I'll just, I just look at the um, stormwater work, and it's a discharge of roading stormwater, by the way. Um, and I'm wondering why that's not part of maintenance budget. Um, from my seat, this the maintenance money is already um, in play <coughs> for other things, and this is something that's come up during the year. So it refers to as capital expenditure. Right. Whether it's um, operational through maintenance or, or capital, in terms of assets in the ground, the reserve fund can cover both. Um, so this is not included in our current budgets as it <coughs> down, so we wish to use the reserve to get the um, job finished. And then the other question was the timeline, which would suggest there's um, some legal issues. And then what are the other costings holding given the delays? <coughs> about 300 days, is that going to hold? It's been a while. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Chief the Engineer. Through the Chair, I can confirm that we have placed, uh, as the report says, a long lead, um, long leading time materials on pre-order through final orders, so that has mitigated to some extent the impact of cost inflation and uh, escalation of costs. Uh, in terms of if this report were approved today, then the final orders are ready to start work uh, almost immediately. I wouldn't say next week, but uh, uh, imminently in terms of delivering this project. Thank you, Indy. Uh, Councillor Foy, you had a few questions in the chat. I wondered if you'd like to speak to those. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hey, thank you, um, Mayor Moko. It was just to note that on page, uh, I didn't have the page number, the Hague Workman report, uh, page 38, uh, the record number there is 323 to 333. And I'm familiar with that site there that's next to the plough ground um, by the Archibald family. But the site plan uh, excerpt above the aerial shows the site plan <coughs> right of that site plan. Uh, while I support <coughs> this 
funding and, and using our stormwater reserves funding. Uh, I'll just note that I would seek for the resolution to include the legal description uh, and probably should cover um, the legal descriptions of the one, two, three titles that are um, relating to the works being undertaken. Is that an amendment you're putting to the table, Councillor Ford? I'll just seek staff response to that um, before I'll seek a formal amendment. Staff, just a question here about the aerial not matching up with the legal description of the property at hand. <coughs> Pass it over to our chief engineer, Andy. We're just checking. The chair, we're just checking the legal descriptions. Uh, will it hurt for us to not just put it in any way when we um, ensuring that it's the correct place? The legal description is mentioned on page 34. Yeah, that's done. Yeah. I'm sure that we can include the legal description. Yeah, that's not an, an issue that we uh, are being particularly concerned about. Councillor Foy, if you need, if you would like to see this happen, I'm sure that our mover and seconder would be happy to just include it in the original motion. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I just wanted to note to staff that with any of these reports that come, if it's a legal matter about a council formal easement, it needs to include a copy of the certificate of title as part of the report. That should be a standard process for all of these reports. Thank you. I'm just looking at our acting CE who has noted that. Um, so at that, I haven't had any indication for further speaking, so we will put this to a vote. Oh, so, apologies, Councillor Rad, would you that like that a right of reply? Oh, no, I just just to say that the recommendation is pretty straightforward. I don't know where the rest are coming from, but anyway. Thank you, Councillor Radic. A pressing question. Just a, a question was this is to repair something rather than reimburse Correct. the owner. All right, we'll put this to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Opposed. Opposed, Councillor Court. Any abstentions? Thank you, and the motion is carried. We will move on to item 7.3 on page 39. Easement on local purpose Esplanade Reserve Y Rawarawa Stream. Uh, the recommendation is that Council approves the granting of a right of way easement to the Reserves Act of 1977 on the local purpose Esplanade Reserve Lot 16 for the purpose of constructing and using a private bridge over the Y. I thought it was Y. Y. Rawarawa. Y. Rawarawa stream connecting um, State Highway 10 Kiri Kiri, 15 Conifer Lane Kiri Kiri, and to have uh, triple to Kitty Kitty, and that approval is provided subject to Northern Regional Council granting regress consent for the construction of a bridge, compensation being negotiated and finalised, and that the landowners deal with cost and disbursements, um, that they seek the relevant consents needed as required by law, that they bear all legal and survey costs, they bear full responsibility for the construction, that the bridge is a landowner's asset, and that they indemnify the council of all costs. So I have a mover for this. Thank you, Councillor Court. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kreskovic. Councillor Court. This item came to the Bayamon Pongaroa Community Board Legal Council from Council with the to the report. The applicant was here to speak to the report. <coughs> the applicant made it clear that this was primarily a health and safety issue for the staff to be able to move them around the property. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this property, it's kind of uh, where the concerts are held on State Highway 10 
while there is no desire at this time and any of the community board or community plans to develop a public walkway at this location, it is of no cost to council to preserve the land uh, in case that option is required at some point in the future and in the record growth that is occurring here. As all costs are being borne and all responsibilities are being borne by the landowner, this is cost neutral to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kleskovich, would you like to speak to this? Can't hold it. Any other councillors? Councillor Hakiat Haroi. Tiro Pai Tine Kau Papa Nga Rata Oi Tu e Oira Mea Kato e Tira He Mea Pai. Me Kau Tuko Oi Tine e Mihi Mea Kau Whakai a Nga Tiri Hia e Kau Ki Te Hau He Momo a Hui Hui me Te Hāpuri Ho. Oi Nga. And Tu Pura Wai Kwen. Um, it's great that they'll be covering costs associated with this uh, issue, and if Nazi media agrees, um, then I have to support inclusion of community consultation. Would any other, thank you, um, interpreter Waits, are, are there any other comments? Thank you, Councillor Foy. <coughs> Uh, just one question to start on page 40. It says um, the application was declined by council planning staff to create a right of way easement, but no narrative was provided around the reasons why. Mm. Thank you. Um, it was declined by the planning department at the time the application was under section 348 of the local government act 1974 for right away and it was declined because um the member the staff member asked a question and the question was why can't you do this bridge on your own land why do you need to do it about the dirt? and that question was then answered and so the application basically was lost so they went for an answer for three months and after that just and so perhaps the statement in the report is wrong, it wasn't declined, it was just discontinued and cancelled because of the lack of um, response to the information request. Does that answer the question? Yeah. But the main concern in the um, processing of the application by that same staff planning staff member was that there was a lack of public benefit, um, distinct lack, uh, and the benefit was for the private landowner and it was a disproportionate balance and that's probably why I think it was declined. Thank you for that. No. I've had no indication for further speaking, so I'll go back to Councillor Court for a right of reply. I don't know that's really pertinent, but I find that utterly bizarre that a person applying for a right of way easement has to get and we ask them, why don't you do it somewhere else? I would have thought that the entire purpose of the resource consent is because the applicant is doing something on their own land and should we not trust the applicant has a valid reason for asking. And I just find that, I hope that is not how we speak to people when they come to the Farm of District Council seeking a, uh, a consent. Um, why aren't you doing it somewhere else? It just sits really uncomfortable to me, that's all I want to say, I'll put my That's right. Thank you. We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. I'll Before abstain. We... Thank you, Councillor Boyd. Before we break for lunch, because I have had a note that lunch has arrived, we will go to item 7.4, or market and walk. Approval to increase budget on page 51. And the motion is that council approves uh, $265,773 of additional budget for Omapiri Wall, approval to increase budget to be funded from existing budgets within the maritime activity. If we could get a uh, break now, that would be great, but uh, that's the motion. Um, do I have a member, Councillor John Vucic, seconder? Uh, Councillor Halkiar Haruira, Councillor Vucic. This, uh, 
It has to seem more important. This was damaged by Merchant Diesel, which we did uh, successfully get some money from. But what's probably not seen is this walk is crucial for the rescue that occurs in the Hokinga Harbour. And it's the one, one, one walk that can um, have boats uh, come up the side on a and have a floating portion which can then deliver those that have been being rescued and perhaps have possibly hurt on the mark and up to the ambulance. So it's crucial that this was done. And, and I was on the community board when they went through this in detail and said that has to be included. I have to admit, I am just, even though I support them, I am disappointed with the delays. It seems that this extra cost is a result of delays and just bearing in mind again the cost that's so that so if we try to address we need to improve the way we do our operation that moved quicker. It's nine months ago, and here we are asking for extension. This needs to be done immediately, and other future projects likewise, so that our operation costs can be reduced. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Halkia. Thank you, Paul. And support. Thank you for that. Uh, I actually was out there yesterday afternoon along with Councillor Rakina and um, Final Holdings have done a phenomenal job at the repairs for this wall. Um, and I also would just like to commend the previous Kaitawe Hukianga Community Board for doubling down on ensuring that there were intertidal steps put there. Um, the intertidal steps I've heard from several people in the community um, who have said that those, rather than ladder runs, have been phenomenal in allowing access to the water for all ages. And also incredibly important, should there be any misfortune before uh, any of our vessels in the Hokianga Harbour at the bar, easier access for emergency services to reach those. So I just wanted to come in there. I'll open up the floor for comments from anyone else. Thank you, Councillor McNally. Um, just on page 52, the two tables there, it refers to the insurance claim, 55. And then it goes on to project actual costs in table two. And I see a contingency of 50,000 down the bottom. That doesn't make sense to me. If it's actual, why is a contingency chucked in? There's no other cost. <coughs> is there a, I, I was thinking, um, we'll um, take that up offline and get a response in for that effect. Thank you, Janice. Uh, Councillor Vucic, right of reply? We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. No. Those opposed? Just for that one thing, uh, Councillor McNally in opposition. And Councillor Foy, any abstentions? The motion is carried. Councillor Foy was in favour for that item. All right, we are going to break for lunch now. Um, I'll give you 20 minutes. I will see you back in half an hour. Uh, lunch has arrived and we do have quite a bit on the agenda when we get back. So um, please make sure that you do have uh, something to eat, probably top up the coffee, and we'll see you back here uh, at 12 o'clock on the dock.
Hello, welcome back. I hope you all had a copy so we can zoom through the rest of the agenda. Elected members, we're on item 7.5, procurement plan and contract award uh, on page 55. The recommendation is that council acknowledges the approved Northern Transportation Alliance procurement proposal and delegate authority to the FND's to our chief executive to award the contract um, including a supplier recommendation approval, contract signing and a purchase order approval. Can I have a move for this motion? Just, just before you carry on, please, uh, Mayor Moko, I've got a question. Why in an open meeting are we advertising or publicising the budget speed? Has the, have the tenders already been leaked through the procurement process? Yeah, that, that is um, unusual. Isn't there a commercial sense? Please, you know, I, I just got some issues with both, and that's the next two, second time in since. So, uh, Deputy Mayor Stratford did raise this with our Chief Executive, Councillor McNally, um, and it was already in the LTP. <laughs> Happy for you to take that offline with her. Uh, I didn't pick up on this, to be honest. But we'll find a appropriate way to it. Right, so public exclusion. But and um, procurement policy would suggest tenders would come back prior to an approval rather than set a price point for the process. Anyway, carry on. Would you like to be the member of this motion, Councillor McNally? No, no, you carry on. Okay, and I have a move that I put this on the table. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for the second there. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Court. Deputy Minister. I don't have any comments at this stage. Council the court. I don't have any recommendation, but I'd just like clarification on why more we were in there because I thought we had completed the week more and it may be that I'm just mistaken. Uh, Andy, do you have someone who can speak to this? To the chair, we have two representatives from Sorry. Sorry, could we repeat the question? We didn't. Um, so we've got Moirua on page 59 has been a location for raised traffic facilities. The member is questioning that as we had thought that that work had already been completed. Um, no, the work hasn't commenced. So what we're, doing, what we're currently doing is uh, I'm really sorry, but I'm clearly getting deaf from my old age. Would you? <coughs> I said the work, hasn't, the work hasn't commenced yet. What we are doing currently is the speed limit review. Um, so, sorry, I'm just saying here we've done raised traffic island outside the shops to slow everyone down. Where's this? No, that's part of state highway. Yeah. Not our local network. Oh, okay. So yeah. this is going to go where? Along Oteria Road and the side roads. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> happy to open up the floor to any other comments from members? Yeah. The Council of Research. Yeah. yeah. It's not, not so much about this, but some of the sort of when I saw this, and I'm wondering, can you make a, can someone make a note that we need to look at our process? Because I don't like actually having the values put out there as, as being laid by, by uh, Councilman McNally. But then also, um, I'd rather us see, see the evening net for an exact figure and then we can approve it. It just, it just seems to be the process that we would actually have on. But doing this up front. Well, I would put in a tender for that exact amount now. <laughs> yeah, minus $1. I know, I know the parameters of it now. Showing your hand with your cards. Well, well that's right, and, and, and especially in this time when we have uh, you know, significant, even I said, I wouldn't raise it yet again, with significant um, you know, rates increases that we kind of deal with, yeah. I'd like to see a pushback on our contracts and say, well, how can we do this cheaper? You know, rather than saying, well, that's, that's going to pay, pay that. I know you can make big savings by actually looking at it differently, and I hope that process is happening more. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, sorry. Thank you for giving me time to make those comments. Really good. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Councillor Research. Um, I personally I, I support the comments that have been made from elected members in the space, but in terms of the actual work being done, I'm 
very much in favour of this work going through, despite the fact that we, I don't know, I've got questions about the processes here. But can I just highlight for these communities uh, in Tehipu Ward, Ahipara Township, uh, Kaitaia Town Centre, um, Bad Islands, Whangaroo, and Wedewa, and for Kaikui Hokiana, we've got Kaikuhi North. That these are so much more than just names on a piece of paper for these communities who <laughs> who have to live in fear, in all honesty, of the potential ramifications <laughs> that come with um, poor driver behaviour. And uh, the work that this council can do through these budgets to address this from our point of view, and while there are other agencies at hand here, like um, you know, better driver education, uh, policing and that space, this is something that this council can do to help address these huge concerns that I hear from almost daily from people in our community. Um, so I'm very much in favour of this and, I, and I'm happy to open up the floor to any further commentary. If not, we'll put it to a vote. Thank you, Councillor Kisovic. Um, I see the names here to be in support of the, the paper up here. I'd like the staff of uh, council uh, to do further work and uh, look at some of the other areas around the north, for example, outside the Fala Pitsi or the Faith, um, the doctors in Pukenu, 100 kilometres, totally dangerous for any fire out there. And how water itself, where the young girl was killed because people were flying through there. It's another area we need. It's another area in Mama Lee. So, total funding, we have a lot of money. We have a lot of money to keep my tattoo, which we have in California, and we have a lot of money. So, we have a lot of money. And we have a lot of money. And we have a lot of money. So, we support the issues being raised. Um, can I just get you to note, please, um, Janice? <coughs> I think this will be something that will be beneficial for elected members to get in way of a of, of a briefing note on how uh, we can input and our communities can input into the traffic calming mm -hmm. matrix or whatever it is the MTA have. See, I need to know as well, to be honest. Um, and how that process works, just as one of our briefings. And can I just also acknowledge James, Franz and Greg, who are our Northern Transportation Alliance reps. Uh, any further comments? Put that, oh, sorry, Deputy Amy Stratford, would you like a right of reply? Come on in. No. <laughs> uh, we'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? McNally. Councillor McNally, any All abstentions? Abstention from Councillor Kleskovich. The motion is passed. We'll move on to item 7.6 on page 62. Something similar. Uh, that Council acknowledge the approved Northern Transportation Alliance procurement proposal. Delegate authority to our Chief Executive to award a contract to a maximum contract value of $2,747,000 in um, upon the satisfactory conclusion of the tender evaluation phase, including supplier recommendation approval, contract signing, and purchase order approval. Can I have a move for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Court. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Research. Councillor Court. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just have a question from the community board chairs in the room. Does the list on page 67 tell me with your understanding of your board's work on your footpath prioritisation projects? Look, I, I haven't cross-checked them, <clears throat> but bearing in mind the uh, two lower down on page 67 that I know to be work in progress, um, <coughs> mine looks really as it should be, um, what we get for our money. We've picked uh, some, some pretty big projects to check. We're, we're about um, completing one or, or completing the pictures, so quite happy and just shout out to uh, Elizabeth Stacey in particular from NTA and the great work with our board in order to um, prioritise them. 
Thank you, uh, Chair Ward. Did our other community board chiefs have any comments here in this space? Thank you, Mayor Walker. Um, yes, no, most of those, yeah, all of those have passed on our list, but there was, um, I guess, the next one will come in the next year, which will be uh, bigger <laughs> projects and through Bookie Photo. Yeah. 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 So, Thank you, uh, Community Board Chair Gardner, Community Board Chair Lapkin, and then um, we'll go to Councillor Foy. Okay, um, kia ora everybody. Yes, I'm aware of all of those, um, but I'd like to hand over to um, Councillor Busich because he would have been the yeah. councillor at the time of the Community Board, and I'm just hoping that they will prioritise as they should have been. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Busich. So, so, so I can confirm they are. Um, this was in the previous term, so these were well, these are the priorities that we put through through a process that we worked through um, as the community board. So I can can confirm that's on the list. Uh, as a former community board member for Papua New Guinea, I did take extra note of these and uh, satisfied that they're correct. Councillor Foy. Uh, thank you, Member Foy. I don't know if Elizabeth Stacey's there. No, uh, we have James, Franz, and Greg in the room from North of Transportation Alliance. Uh, potentially, Greg might know. Uh, just, just in regard to the Pukoto shared path uh, that was approved through the community board, was that last financial year? I just wanted to be clear that the funds for that had been approved, and Elizabeth Stacey had highlighted that to the community board. Um, I I don't know if it was last financial or it was last financial year, but I don't know the conversations that Elizabeth had with the community board, so I can't comment on that. But I can certainly follow up and come back just to um, get a summarise of, of those conversations and what was said, and follow up with the minutes that were at those sort of meetings. Well, it's just and that I don't want to. Wait, I'll just ask if this is pertinent to this, and perhaps we will double check that before we put this. It, it is because it's relevant to the list here. In my understanding, it was at the top of this list. So if it's not on this list, that's my question why. And, and Member Gardner has already raised that question as well. Can we have um, one of our governance team check back on the Tiku meeting minutes to find where Pukepotu in that space? Uh, would any other members like to speak otherwise? Okay, I'll move that we just leave this to life for the time being so we can check up on that so it's not missed. Can I have a second one? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Stratford. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Excellent. We will just check on. Can we call the Mayor Beach again, please? Sorry? Can we call the Mayor Beach, please? Can lie on the table? <laughs> Item 7.7, .7, page 7. Oh, sorry. I wasn't listening. I mean, <laughs> that was leaving it to on the table <laughs> so we can ensure oh, that uh, Councillor Foy's concerns are captured. We're on page 71, item 7.7, 7, amended class for gaming and TAB venue policy, <laughs> approval of draft for public consultation that the Council approves the proposal for an amended Class 4 Gaming and TAB Union Policy in Section 1, and approves the period for right making written statements on the issue <coughs> from the 15th of February to the 15th of March, approves that Council will hear any people wanting to present their submissions orally on the 6th of April 2023, uh, and delegate to me as me the power to change the date should I need to, as our ex council staff to make all necessary logistical arrangements for people to be heard on that day. Can I remove it for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Radic. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Court. Councillor Radic, would you like to speak to the proposal? Very straight forward. Thank you. Councillor Court. Uh, I'm happy to move it, and just in case anybody wants to know, because I didn't know what the white key yes. resident was, so I Googled it. Mm -hmm. Said, uh, class 4 venue has a wide meaning but it does not include an address. This indicates that Parliament did not intend that the term place means.
rent or building at a specific address. Further, when a building is relocated in close proximity, Parliament considers it to be the same place. Just in case anybody wanted to know. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that. The three times I read this, I didn't actually pick up on it. So thank you for capturing that for us, Council Local. Uh, would any other members like to speak to this? All right, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. We'll move on to item 7.8 on page 89. Parking bottle recommendation for making amendments. The recommendation is that the Council approves the recommendations and the staff report on amendments to the parking bylaw in attachment one, and that no changes are made in response to submissions. Uh, B, amend schedule one clause seven to include Wendy Wood Lane to the parking bylaw, the east side of Wendy Wood Lane from the intersection with Stella Drive to the cul de sac. And C, amend the parking bylaw in the section 22AB of the Land Transport Act of 1998. Can I have a move before this motion? I'm happy to move. Seconder. Yep. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stratford. Uh, I, I guess because I was previously on our strategy and policy committee and have seen this um, come through, I don't have anything further to add to it. But Deputy Mayor Stratford, may. Um, no, I don't really. I don't have anything more to add on the parking by law. I see. I did see that some of the portions that had been previously missed out have been added, mm -hmm. so thank you. Would any other members like to speak to the recommendation? All right, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, abstentions. The motion is carried. We'll go to item 7.9 on page 113, which is Easter Sunday. Shop trading policy recommendations for making a new policy. The recommendation is that council uplift the report and recommendations for making a new policy from the table. Agrees the recommendations of the staff report analyzing the submissions um, with a few grammatical changes within that. And in the legislative context section, the date of the supply of alcohol act has changed from 2021 to 2012. Um, under Section 5A of the Shop Trading Hours Act 1990, adopt the Easter Sunday Shop Trading Policy as per attachment to revoke our Easter Sunday Trading Policy of 2017. Do I have a move for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Court. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hartman. Apologies. We've got a slight change there. It was just a point A to uplift it from the table. The report was left alive previous training, so it's basically kind of like you don't need to uplift it, you could just decide what to do with it. Thank you for that, Councillor Court. This was extensively workshopped in the last tribunal. In the body of the report, you will see that the uh, strategy and policy committee decided to go out for a second round of consultation, particularly targeting religious institutions. That, that's been done. I note in the report on page 120, the talk for the policy has increased 48% in favour in 2017, 62% in favour in 2022, which is, uh, which is heartening. I think we got it right. It's right as we can do when something is reasonably controversial. So um, I'm happy with the significant amount of work that we've undertaken by the Stratton Poll Committee. Um, and I think the rest of the report reads for itself. Thank you. Councillor Court, Councillor Rakina. We know that we have to take a cry to hang a cry to carry it. We know that we have to put out to kill to in a hapori, being a hahi, to keep the hair on a taki kemui or a to make a more time or to tow a tow hoko hoko or to king a yui katoa. When I'm attacking the name of it, I'm taking away from it. I'm acknowledging the people who did the consultation and consulted with the communities out there. Would any other members like to speak to this motion? Aye. Um, e Paikehau, 
na tekano o te kōrero me te hākori, kua putu mai ngā whakāro. Kia āhei ngā toa, kia tūpea, engari te nuingo ngā o etahi e meana, kia kaua e tohu tohu ki ngā kaimahi me mahi. Kua wāte me te hongo ko ngā kaimahi me mahi. E tino redi ki he. Sa ahako ka tūpira ngā toa, ka ia kaimahi te tika ngā kaimahi ka hui rā nei. And took it away. And then no idea. Supporting the consultation and also acknowledging how important it is that the shopkeepers themselves, the business owners themselves, are able to decide whether or not they can open. Deputy Minister. Engari, ka taia te tūpira, engari, kāri e tino hakaturingi a mā ngā kaimahi e mahi. And not mandated to do so. That's what I was going to add. It's important with this policy that all our all businesses in Far North know that we have this. There's a lot of that they've misunderstood over the last few years while we've had this that they they couldn't open. So we need to make sure that that is well articulated out in the community when we, um, if we adopt this today. But also, um, I just want to um, reiterate that employers can't force their workers to work on this day. And I know a lot, a lot do get forced to work on this day. So. Um, Maybe attached to the media release, there can be, you know, know your section, the link to the ERA, you know, employment relations advice. Not even it's called. Yeah. Thank you for getting me straight. But if we can capture this for through Ruben for our now partner hold that we put out, our media publication and maybe a specific media release on it, because supermarkets are selling hot cross buns, so Easter must be. Around the corner. I haven't had any further indications for speaking, so we'll put this. Sorry, Councillor Court, do you want to write a reply? Put this to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. We will now go to item 7.10 on page 134. The motion is. For a parks and reserves bylaw recommendations for making a new bylaw, the recommendation is that Council A agree to staff recommendations in the analysis of submissions that we had. The restriction does not apply to emergency services. And Roman numeral two, that no persons should bring any dog onto any park or reserve or allow any dog in their custody or under their control to remain on any park or reserve that is specified in the council's dog management policy as parks or reserves where dogs are not permitted. And B, that we make the parks and reserves bylaw under section 106 of the Reserves Act of 1977 and section 145 of the Local Government Act of 2002. Can I remove this from this motion? Thank you, Councillor Corder. Seconder. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Radic. Councillor Court. The report speaks for itself. Just in relation to the email traffic that we all received overnight on this subject, the dog management policy is a policy that we establish with the dog can go. I just think that there was a bit of a misunderstanding, and I like to acknowledge the books on the fly that were supplied by the DPD Mayor. So I don't have any concerns over that email traffic being required to be further addressed. Thank you. Uh, just thank you for that, um, Councillor Court. Just for yourself and Maddie and all members, um, apologies. I do have some further notes on my own sheet. Staff have brought to our attention the need to update the recommendation in the Parks and Reserves Bylaw Report. This update is an administrative matter. There is no change to the proposed bylaw itself. It is a requirement of the Reserves Act that the Parks and Reserves Bylaw is approved by the Minister of Conservation before it comes into effect. And so the commencement date for the bylaw cannot be determined until then. Staff recommend that council delegate to myself the power to determine the commencement date 
of the bylaw once this approved from the minister has been received. So we have a, can we get that up on the screen please? Uh, see to that, that in accordance with the exception, the bylaw shall not have any force until it is approved by the Minister of Conservation. Indeed, that we delegate to myself as me the power to determine that commencement date once we get that approval. Uh, Councillor Coy and Councillor Radich, are you happy for those additions to this resolution? Just the administrative stuff. All right. Uh, Councillor Radich, did you have anything to add to speak on this matter? Any other members? Councillor Deputy Mayor Bradford. I don't know where I'm going to go. Um, so, yes, there's been a lot of um, emails from the Bay Rollins watchdogs, and I had to hark back to some of the um, submissions that we had on the dog management bylaw for 2018 to consider what they were trying to get across to me. And in my reply to them last night, I just, you know, reiterated look, it says what you want it to say, but the issue is that it, it is of a negative connotation. It gives that sense that we can't take a dog on unless, you know. Um, what they're looking for from us is to consider framing it in a more positive way. And I have had an offline discussion with um, Zach Fryer and Carla, but I, I just want us to consider um, as a council, you know, can, can we can we say the same thing, but in a more more positive way? So are you suggesting an amendment to the wording to say something along the lines of a person may bring their dog onto any council park and reserve that is permitted under the... Dog management bylaw. Mm -hmm. oh, but, but that might be a bit too, too positive. A person may bring... <coughs> It is, as specified in the dog management bylaw, dogs are. Just, can, can we just say refer to I the dog management can bylaw? Can we, uh, if you're pushing an amendment, I'll ha I happily first. take that. Otherwise, I think that this could potentially be captured in a media release following <coughs> this as well, to and to go on our Ngāpā Rumuhau. To let the people, especially our Bay of Islands watchdogs, know that despite the wording in here, um, maybe we have a special dog specific one. Do you think that would be better than trying to reword something that will still mean the same thing in any case? I think we need to stick to the recommendation that's in front of us. I know where Kelly's coming from, but look at that later. Yeah, I. Don't have time to think of the words on the fly, sorry. Okay, we'll ensure that, if, uh, Janice, you can note that for Ruben. Um, we have a media release following the adoption of this to ensure we capture the points raised. And can I just ask that um, Deputy Mayor Stratford uh, be a part of that to uh, approve it yep. before we get yep. it out? Yeah, and before I totally finish on that, the signage is consistently wrong on many of our parks and reserves. So I don't know if there's anyone from district facilities in the room, um, JC. Uh, <laughs> we need to get that right because it causes a lot of um, radu out there. You know, they've been walking their dogs in some parks and reserves and then next minute there's a sign saying on leash or no dogs allowed. And it's incorrect. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Also, the serial translations on those are incorrect as well. <laughs> oh. We'll capture that. Uh -huh. uh, Councillor Kleskovic. Uh, no, okay. You're right, thank you. I've had no further indication, so I will go back to Councillor Court for a right of reply. Right of reply, thank you. We'll put this to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Mm -hmm. oh, those opposed? Abstentions, the motion is carried. We will go to item 7.11 on page 158. Temporary road closure for the Mamonui Waterfront Festival. The recommendation is that Council approves the proposed temporary road closure to accommodate the safe operation of the Mamonui Waterfront Festival. 
I have a move for this motion. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Stratford, seconded by Councillor Halkia. Deputy Mayor Stratford, would you like to speak to this motion? Just looking forward to it. <laughs> Is that a conflict of interest? No. Um, <laughs> Councillor no, Halkia, how do we do? Any other members like to speak to this? Thank you, yeah, just uh, Councillor Halkia. Um, they're more called than I've attended nearly every year than when we won it. A fantastic day. Mm -hmm. Don't drive back. Thank you very much, Councillor Radic. Councillor Ford. Uh, thank you, Mayor Moko. I just wanted to raise, as uh, Councillor Radic has my support for this event. However, we've re received correspondence about um, the processing of the paperwork. Um, behind this event, and it won't go ahead unless uh, that process is secured by our staff. Uh, I don't uh, can see that Council Stratford has been in the correspondence, uh, but just wanted to highlight that to staff that it's really important that we ensure the paperwork is done in a prompt time frame. Thank you, Councillor Foy. I'll ask that you follow that up with Deputy Mayor Stratford and our staff offline so that we make sure that this event has all of its success. I've had three um, speakers in favour of this. I'm not speaking for again, so okay. I'd just like the minute to record that as the liquor licenser who will approve or decline this application. I am not taking part in this conversation. <coughs> Thank yes, you for it shouldn't that. Have been Councillor Foy. Do I have any speakers against this proposal? If not, I will go to Deputy Mayor Stratford for a right of reply. We'll put this to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those aye. against. And Deputy Mayor Court, you are abstaining from this. Uh, sorry, Councillor. We'll go to item 7.12 on page 163, which is the temporary road closure, a temporary road closure for the big road tour of Northland. The recommendation is that Council approves the proposed temporary road closure to accommodate the safe operation of the BDO tour of Northland. Can I have a mover for this? Thank you, Councillor Court. Seconded by Councillor Halkiard Harawida. Councillor Court. No comment, thank you. Councillor Halkiard Harawida. Thank you. In support, thank you. Any other members like to speak to this? Deputy Minister. I've got a question. In the um, report, oh my gosh, where the dates go? It says that on a Friday, there'll be Friday the 17th of March, road closure to start at 7 a.m. and finish at 4 o'clock on the mm. south bank, southbound lane on Kitty Kitty Road. Is that a typo? Because Can I can't you, um, imagine, it's on me. page 165, I can't imagine what that is going to do, I can imagine, because we've seen it with recent <coughs> on that road, how much of an impact that's going to have to the traffic on a weekday. Um, the event isn't on a Friday, so I don't understand. Chair, that's, that's the, the application the, um, the, I suppose the, the event holders have put in, we'll assess that um, <coughs> through the car team of putting that in. We're closing the southbound lane and keeping the northbound lane open. Um, there will be destruction, there will be advertisements around the destruction in terms of the papers going out with the notices in it, there will be VMS boards going up to make people aware. <coughs> yes, there will be destruction um, with us in the time. Um, to note with that as well, the, I understand that they started the event, so it's as soon as the riders are gone, so they set up, let the riders go, um, they will clear up, so it's likely that we've gone before that, so it'll be less disruption than what was noted on the day, but there will be disruption. So it's happening on the Friday and on the Sunday, this closed lane. <coughs> I understand on the, the Friday they've got the south one being closed on KK Road to, to start the event, and they will head off around the, the country and do a bit of cycling and then on the Sunday I think as they come back and there is a, a road closure, full road closure then on a common um, and that will be then for the end of the event and that one obviously will have less disruption because there's more work. Um, it's on a Sunday. Alternatives and on a Sunday but yeah so that one will be a longer closure but yeah um, less disruption. 
Um, just another question. Are the community, like, yeah, this, I'm really surprised that this is okay with Kitty Kitty, to be honest. Yeah. Sure, so it's, um, so it's been advertised and we've not heard it asked just off the mm. So my name's Dale Roberts and I'm the traffic management coordinator for Funnel. Um, so it's been advertised and we've not heard any negative feedback yet, mm -hmm. but there is still some time to hear back. Okay. Um, another thing that's maybe worth noting is this one-way closure of Kirikiri Road is far shorter and in a better position on Kirikiri Road than, say, the rehab works that we've done recently that caused quite a bit of disruption. Mm -hmm. So the detour for this one is not all the way via State Highway, but rather essentially around the block in Kirikiri. So it's far shorter than that one that caused the disruption prior. So it goes around one of the busiest roads in the year, high school, daycares, um, primary school. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I have a lot of hesitation, or... sorry. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hauke Adharu, a seconder, would you like to speak to this motion? Yeah, I was a bit worried about um, transport disruptions because this morning or yesterday morning there was a big line up just at the, um, you know, one of the roundabouts. Um, so I'm hoping there's a lot of, lots of publicity and the, I don't know, even like the Mangamuka neon sign so people know it's coming because they'll get angry. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, community Board Chair Ward. Thanks, Neil Looker. Yeah, my, my concern was in the light of the uh, closure, closure for the roadworks. There was a lot of fallout over that. Um, it's good old St Patrick's Day. Let's hope Kitty Kitty doesn't decide to have a street party and do anything exciting. Um, I just feel, you know, it's, it's encompassing school hours and Wendy Wood Lane is a major heavy traffic route there. And you said you've advertised it. Can I ask where, please? Uh, it's on that paper, but I believe it's Northern Advocate. Oh, I can't even see it. Because, I, I mean, as a community board chair, I, we should be aware sure. uh, to get it out there. Um, and I, it's the first I've heard of it. So um, I'm aware of the annual event. I just wasn't aware of these road closures in the room. Okay. Can we um, just take note of that, MTA, that I know that we're the only council in Northland that have got a community board tier to it, but that um, if we ensure that we keep our community board or committed to the council as well, just that awareness, the, um, the benefits of the on the ground elected representative, representativeship that we have at the community board will really help in situations like this, so that there's some sort of formal check in of ensuring that um, they are kept well informed as well. Whether that be through yourselves or through our council. Definitely. Councillor Kleskovich. Um, just touching on what Councillor Hoka Harbour said, um, the publicity. The last time there was disruptions, we had a we at the Turner Centre, we were all right. Um, we just have adequate signing, use all the forums, Facebook, the Kitty Kitty Notice Board, that would be a good place to start. Uh, both papers and some of our radio uh, networks. Um, because when people don't know what's going on, it's, they met, it's met with frustration, and uh, we don't need the level of frustration. Uh, coming towards us, so yeah, just touching on the total of the corridor from uh, Councillor Harawina um, regarding the extra publicity. I'm not going to allow Deputy Mayor Stratford the right to speak again outside of standing orders, but I will get her to send a message through to you around what. Um, some of the community needs we have in this space around this road closure, please, Kelly. All right, I haven't had any further indication of um, speaking requests. Councillor Court, did you have a uh, right reply? Thank you. Um, the words <coughs> starting at Wendywood Lane to the roundabout at Kipkiri Road, Twin Coast Discovery Highway are different to the map. I take Twin Coast Discovery Highway to be State Highway 10. Um, but then I look at the map and it's actually just the CBD. If the event starts at 7, it'll be, they'll all be away by the time the school and the business traffic arrive. Um, so I think 
I might not the economic benefit against the business disruption in my mind. I think it's worth a try. But I do think we're really important putting an advertisement in the advocate and expecting everyone to find it is not sufficient. I think we actually need to contact the business associations if these things happen in town. And for this one, because the entire school district is captured, we probably do need to write to the schools. It's too late to do that now, but it will happen in the next few months. Thank you. To my understanding, the Katong Coast Discovery Highway um, isn't the state highway. It is the state highway itself, but it travels through Kitty Kitty CBD um, out across the Waikapa uh, bypass as well. Um, and across the, it includes local roads. It's the little brown signs with the wave on it. Um, did you, as NTA, capture those comments, important comments made there around the need for us to keep our community. So we've got the likes of our Kitty Kitty, we've got Vision Kitty Kitty, we've got the Kitty Kitty Business Association, all of the, the Kitty Kitty High School and Primary School that we need to make sure we're capturing there. I think that you've gotten the point from elected members around the table today about the importance of making sure that our communities are well informed in these spaces. Um, and because of course we hear about it and they are. So, um, that, that will take us to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Any abstentions? The vote is carried. We'll go to item 7.13, the update of council delegations as per the Resource Management Act of 1991 on page 169. The recommendation is that council approves the instruments of delegation as attached. A, the Resource Management Act 1991, the appointment of commissioners uh, now, we have had um, some title changes within our council organisation normal structure, and from what I've read, this is just to capture those new delegations and the titles um, appropriately. So I'm happy to move this. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Stratford. Uh, I've already spoken to it, Deputy Mayor Stratford. Yeah, title call, what you said. Thanks. Well, yep. Procedural, any further commentary? We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against, any abstentions? That is carried. We'll go to item 7.14, the draft training with agreement 2022 to 2025 on page 189. I'm happy to move this. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Deputy Minister Strickland. Uh, so this, um, we had a few, actually it was probably our council that had the most suggested changes to the original draft that I sent out to all elected members, not, um, you know, shortly after we got voted in. Uh, this is the agreement on how we will work with our fellow councils over the next three years. Um, and it does empower the mural forum to be a um, main body to progress things for us as a region. Uh, all of the suggested changes that we put through were captured and put into this draft that we see before us from what I can see anyway. So I'm happy with how it is and I'll get a deputy in the with any commentary second Yep, sorry, I just have one um, one item that we need to suggest needs to be amended. It's on page 197 and it's um, that letter L uh, for the Sport Law Firm Board of Trustees. Um, one trustee appointed by each of the district and regional councils need to be needs to be changed to two trustees appointed by the mayoral forum. Sorry, are you? Absolutely correct there. That has changed itself. Two trustees appointed by the mayoral. One motion. Uh, we can. Just as a second, to put in there Sorry. subject to the rewording of point 4.3L. Um, we can put that through without it having to come back again. Yep. So, he because 
And Chip, could I have a At this point, as a long from this uh, council, um, is it still what is it? Ehara. The IMA is not going to be in the sport of the KTNA. The IMA is not going to be in the sport of the KTNA. Efa o te tai toki rau. Um, ko a hakamane hia, ko kai kai mihira kapa, te tahi o awa māna i kaua mō tātou ana hi o tēne kai mihira i ngari mō ngā kai mihira e whā ki te tēpū. Te uh, uh, tēpū rau. Sorry, that's quite a long time. Oh, i aenei nā kua he tokorua mō ngā kai mihira e whā. And now there are uh, two from do we have a wording there? forum for 4.3 the no. It's fine. Yeah, I haven't had any further. Um, just, I, on page 194, I'm just the of the the Mural Forum provides an opportunity for the chair and needs to provide regional leadership and strategic alignment. The forum has no delegated authority to make decisions or commit to council resources. The reason I highlight that is I had the privilege of two terms sitting as deputy mayor and sitting at the Mural Forum. And that is often lost sight of. And I just wanted to highlight that because that's really critical to my view that the mural forum is there to advocate on behalf of the region on the agreed priorities that are established by each individual authority, uh, not to make them up on their own. Um, and I'm not suggesting that you're going to do that, but my observation is that that has happened in the past. So I just highlight that for the avoidance of doubt. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Court. All right, we put that to a vote. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. We will go to item 7.15, District Licensing Committee appointments on page 201. Um, Moved by Councillor Court. Seconder. I'm happy to second. Councillor Court. I thought it would be visual aid today. Oh, just, to visual aid. Assist, just to assist everybody. <laughs> that little bit of light reading is the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act. So if anybody's interested in putting their hands up, there will be an examination and your pass rate is 100% and you'll have to read that by close of business. I'm joking. But that, <laughs> That is an incredible piece of legislation. And to give you some idea of the workload, um, as of last night, I released my 56th decision this year, and we're only just at the beginning of February. And I have five hearings in active play at the moment. So I can't do it all. So we do need the second DLC particularly to address um, workload, conflict of interest, and leave. Murray Clearwater uh, is a highly experienced commissioner, and you've got a CV in there, and I've already taken the liberty of sending him out and passing on uh, three hearings to him, subject to this being approved today uh, due to conflicts of interest. Uh, application, the smallest application you're likely to receive would be a manager certificate renewal, and that runs to about 11 pages. The largest you will receive uh, would make that look small, and I've got one at the moment, which is 131 attachments. So there's an awful lot of reading, and everything that you write is subject to appeal, and <laughs> Kelly and I have been appealed, and it's not very nice because it goes before a district court judge and he expects us to be lawyers and we're not, and he finds everything that's wrong in our decision, and it's a pretty humiliating experience. <laughs> so, if that didn't put you off, 
I'll come back and close and... Thank you, uh, Councillor Court. And can I just say that should we require further screens, please do reach out to IT um, for all of those attachments, because I know that with those new systems we, we've got, you can plug in several more to be able to um, do that work as a chair of one of our potentially subject to this uh, vote district licensing committees. So just um, opening up the floor to anyone else who'd like to speak to this motion. Deputy Ms. Stratford. Um, you'll see in point C, it says may appoint two more, two new elected members. It would be really good if we had um, local voices on these committees, if um, Council Court hasn't already put everybody off. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and I'm only popping on to finish off a hearing that I participated in last year, but I, I don't have... Yeah, it's kind of a condition of being deputy mayor that I'm not on that anymore. So, but I, I'm go. I'll be here to offer any of you if you do want to go on as um as it, and you get paid above your um, remuneration and hourly rate. And yeah, it's it's really it's really um, empowering because you are, you know, adding adding. You know, helping to bring out people's voices, at, especially at a hearing, but you're also um, you have a local understanding on what your community, um, what the level of alcohol harm is in the community. Yeah. I have a question. This just states elected member. It doesn't specify councillor. Is there scope there for community board members? Sure. Through through our council channels rather than through the. One afforded to anyone. The legislation says may. It doesn't say must. So you may appoint an elected member. I don't know whether, in specific answer to your question, I don't know whether that is a council or community board member, legal counsel in the room might be able to answer that. But if you have an, an alternate committee, you actually don't need a deputy chair because the chair person of committee A or committee B has to pick two community members from the pool, so it's not an elected member. It's the list of people that, that are in the report, there that have been identified, um, and they get paid and they get trained. Thank you. Would anyone, would, would anyone be interested in this or would like to speak to the motion? All right. Uh, Councillor Court? Would you like a right of reply? Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Ryan. Yeah, can I just say this a little more clear? This liquor licence has been a shambles. And it doesn't matter what people say, it's been a shambles. And I think a few weeks ago, Peter Jackson, who was one of our great editorials in the Northern Age, in an article, and he really summed it up. He said, we've got time, read the bloody thing. It's interesting, but it's been a shambles. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Radish. We'll put this to a vote. All those in favour, please say aye. <coughs> those opposed? Aye. Abstentions from Deputy Mayor Jackson. And the motion is carried. So did we, we didn't do a We will move to... Uh, do you have an update on the item we need to like? Councillor Ford still has some outstanding questions and I'm going to get some answers from, from staff. Okay, well, we will carry on. We'll still leave it to lie. We'll go to item 8.1 on page 208, which is our Council Action Sheet Update for 2022. The Council received the report. Do I have a move up? Thank yeah. you, Councillor Arakina. Seconded by Councillor Vucic. Councillor Arakina, would you like to speak to this? No, Councillor Vucic. No. Open up to any other members. Councillor Court. Uh, just in regard to the um, electrocoagulation, when that was debated in chambers, I asked a question about short chain carbon molecules. And I was going to get a report back and I haven't received the report back. So 
globally, carry a short chain carbon molecule, includes drugs. And specifically, I was seeking to understand whether electrocoagulation removes methamphetamine, cocaine, and other drugs from the water at point of discharge. All the research I've read said it, had, it doesn't. So I just want a clarification on that. Thank you. Sorry, our uh, acting CE is in a conversation, so didn't catch that. I wonder if any of our uh, group managers caught that audible. Thank you. Um, I thought there wasn't. Let me go back and double check the images <coughs> uh, where the infrastructure planning team did some work on that, following your original request. The question is, was it for the years? Thank you for that, Andy. Um, but why can we include the response? All right, uh, I don't have any further indications, so we will put this. Sorry, Councillor Larkin, did you have a right of reply? Oh. Sorry, Councillor Kapa, I did just see your hand there. Would you like to speak to the motion? Um, I just wanted to, in terms of clarity, whether this was the full list of assets that we are currently counseling. And, I, and if so, and I, I just wanted to note that the Lakaham Dam doesn't appear on this and how that's been captured. Thank you for that. Do I have a comment from commentary from our uh, <coughs> government team? <coughs> there was just a question there from Councillor Kappa around if this is the full list. Um, he just, just noticed that our uh, Nakaru Dam solution is not pictured in this action sheet. So this is considered to be the full list, um, but it excludes any reports that came as information only. So I can't recall if the Nakaru has a lot of information on the Uh just so if we can just get to that yeah. for the next meeting, please so include that on you. Um, and we are still progressing that as well. Thank you for that um, foresight, Councillor Kappa. Uh, we'll put this to a Councillor McNally. No, just um, on the action plan, there was a, there's three sewage issues there, heady, coco and coco. We just wondered how they're progressing, because it doesn't really, some of them date back to 2021. We go back a fair while. Well, the other, other one was a road and protection at Omar Bridge, 7th July last year, and the other, and then the capital improvements, Linda Park, given we're going through an annual plan and budget review. Um, just wondering what's going to go there. Thank you, Councillor McNally. If I can just ask through you as our acting CE Jim, mm -hmm. I know that we've just had. <coughs> some restructuring and new roles take place, but I'd ask that um, if you can take it back to SLT that you've heard some concerns around our outstanding action sheet that all group managers go through this list to pick up on the ones that are pertinent to their department so that we can have some update and follow through the council meeting on all these. Just so we know who's um, taking responsibility for this. And I think that should be satisfactory in terms of progressing some of Yeah, and, and now I don't know it's on page 217, roading, maintenance and operations, contact cost installation. And obviously we've all been talking to ministers over the last week or so, but um, it'd be nice to see if we've had any feedback at all from that. That relates back to September and then November last year. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll put the motion to a vote. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstention? The motion is carried. We will now move to item 9, resolution to exclude the public on page 224. The recommendation of the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings of this meeting. So, uh, the reason being that we, that we, uh, the proceedings of the meetings are likely to result in the disclosure of information for which good reason for withholding would exist under section 6. Um, which is the reason why we have this. As a part of this recommendation that I'm moving, I will also move that we admit our three community chairs and Dr. Wakeford 
into the public excluded session as well. Um, can I have a second this for this? Thank you, Councillor Arakino. All those in favour? No. Those opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried. If we can please have confirmation once we have gone off our live stream, we will proceed with our uh, yellow pages. just shaking up for our footpaths item when we go back into public. Um, to the chair, we've checked the report and the resolution from the board. And what is in the report today reflects that resolution is not included in the issue that Councillor Corey is raising, so we're not clear as to where, where the misalignments come. What we are recommending in that report does reflect the recommendation from the Commission Board. Okay. Can we just get Elizabeth? Can we just check Elizabeth down to get on the phone? Can, can I just. Um, Mia Moko. Um, uh, the delivery of the Pukipoto uh, shared path was to be, coincide with the low cost, low risk filling in of the culverts, which Stacey and there's another man that's the other safety engineer.
Shofan Mustano, we are picking up an item left to lie, which is item 7.6 on page 55. Sorry, I'm just confirming. Thank you very much. Uh, while we were in public excluded, we had uh, three items come over across the table. One was the confirmation of our previous minutes. One was a credit rating assessment. And one was the renewal of the revolving cash facility. Those two items were passed during public exclusion. And they will be included as part of the minutes as they've been confirmed for the public now. Thank you. Um, and that is on my run sheet. Sorry about that. We're going to pick up item 7.5 on page 55. Uh, now, this item was left to lie, but it was moved by Deputy Minister and seconded by Council and Court. Um, we've managed to have a conversation after concerns were raised by Council of Boy that there was a road missing off the Tehiku work plan in this space. Since that time, we have had it clarified that that will be picked up in 2024. Um, but otherwise, as noted here, the work programs are good to go. We'll go to you, Council of Boy. Um, thank you. I just got confirmation from the staff that it will be delivered in 2024, the Pukipoto footpath. But then when I check the the, the report in front of me, it notes a three-year program until the end of 2024. Therefore, it's not part of the list. And there's already been final district council communications that it's going to be delivered in the next two years. I don't know if Ajal wants to provide commentary on that, but there's some disconnect here between delivery and what the council resolution is. And uh, Francis here did talk to it, but I thought it was resolved, but it's not um, based on what's in this report. Thank you, Franz. We've just picked up that while we have the surety from Northern Transportation Alliance that Pukepoto will be picked up in 2024, this current report that we're putting over is the footpaths program for the next three years. Um, and because Pukepoto is in specifically highlighted in this to the concerns that it was going to be missed. Can you just comment on that from Northern Transportation Alliance? So the Tokipaito um, section of the park that is going to be part, well, it's going to be delivered in two sections. And the intent is to maximise the footpath budget. And for that reason, the labelling works is going to be, um, be delivered under the maintenance contract to um, address the safety Audit on the uh, Kataya or Aurora between Kataya and Aibara. That is then going to minimise, or it's really going to draw, drop down the amount of construction costs that the footpath is going to take. And so, what we're hoping is one, once we've delivered the, the um, footpath that we know we have the budget for, you'll know how much money we have remaining, and we really hope that we can deliver the potato one at the end of uh, this financial. Um, Cycle. So with the remaining money that is going to be left after we have delivered the footpaths that are part of this report, there should be money left over. Community board check. Sorry, I was stuck in my mind for a second. The community board check out now. There was two parts of the fucking going on as yes. well, like part of the school too, yes. the village. And the other part was just on the outskirts of Hotel. That was going to be really, you know. Yeah. So that's all going to be done under. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. Long term. Yeah, there's two sections. I just have concerns that there is some disconnect 
between what the community board have understanding around what they are putting across to what we're actually approving as a council through our delegation to approve it right here. And that while I don't want to see anything put on hold because for the sake of this, like I, I think it's important we get this over the line so that this work can be started um, and the budget be allocated and, and, and accordingly. So what I'm hearing from you, Franz, is that once the five identified footpaths are complete under the Tehaku section, you'll then be looking the the groundwork will be done for the Pukeku section that the Tehaku community will want to do out of maintenance budgets. That's right. There will then be further work to complete to actually action that footpath, yeah. but the budget for that is unknown until that first groundwork is done and is also not guaranteed can depending on how much it costs for those first Is that right? That's right. So the first one is going out of the tender still, so we actually want to um, better understand what the cost for those first five is going to be. And the fifth one, which is Pukipoto, oh, sorry, the fifth one, which is the two sections of Pukipoto, that will be done out of the remainder, which is only going to be known once we have tendered. Should there not be enough budget available from the remainder of the Tehaku allocation after they've done after that tender has gone out, what assurance does the Tehaku Community Board have that the Pukepoto section will actually be done, or will you be coming back to us to look for that is, unbudgeted expense to com complete that project? Yeah, that could be the case because um, obviously we're finding a lot of um, price hikes that come through at the tender box. We, we estimate, and especially if you know, the last six months, we've been getting very high numbers. So um, there's no assurance that I can give that the, the savings will probably help you for that section. Well, the tender, is the tender for this work being done set from separate entities why we won't actually know at the same time? For the pocket portal work and the maintenance budgets and the footpaths? Yeah, it's going to be two so the 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 will not be drawn down out of the um, pool or out of the uh, local budget, which is just set aside to put up that will be under a safety road safety no cost for risk work. Okay, I have on my speaking list Deputy Minister for Councillor Halkian Harawida, um, but we'll just jump over to our Chief Engineer Andy, who I can see is standing and may be able to bring some light to the chair. Good chair, I wonder if it would be helpful um, just uh, outlining that the NTA are trying to maximise what is being delivered through a fixed budget given subsidy. So to help um, Council, would it be prudent that uh, they um, approve this resolution here today? And staff undertake to bring a updated report following the tenders um, back to this council so that they can get a full position on whatever the of the road stands and delivery going forward. Uh, I would be happy for that to come through as a briefing to both the Turku Community Board and this council, unless there is a decision that's needed to be made off that. And if there is a decision that actually goes through community board and decisions, that might help just move this item on a little bit today. Yeah. Um, just to get, uh, and then there can be a further dialogue with the councillor for a community board and between the NTA. Thank you for that. Bit. Um, we'll look to doing that from community. Can I just again reiterate the fact that we've spent a considerable amount of time in this meeting because of a disconnect in communication and understanding across our Tohoku community board, our council with Northern Transportation Alliance that I hope we can learn from and ensure that we are, are all of the same understanding in regards to delegations and what decisions are coming through um, in these spaces for the next one. Based off that, I, have, I will go to Deputy Mayor Strickland, you are the original mover of this and we'll have a right of reply. Oh, uh, Councillor Halkia Harawida. Kia ora, just kia mohi wai tātou. Um, he, he momo ara hikoi, mō ngā rimi o Commerce Street me Pukepoto, engari hurekau te tahi mō ngā tamariki o Pukepoto. So, kia ora. Um, and i kite hau um, te iwo o, 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 um, o um, Pukepoto, no, no. In the school? Yeah. 
And two for the right foot. Uh, um, just over where the path that comes, path for path of Commerce Street at Nipukipoko, in Nipukipoko, um, with the present not for Tomato. Already, already exists. Yeah. Yeah. Kerela, Ki, Nga Arahiko and Motira, Ingari Motikura, Hatting Motira Kura Kopokipoto, Ne, Ingari Tira Rori, Kita Taha, or but for children going to Ahipa uh, school, the, uh, Puki 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 school, um, there was no pathway. No Thank you, Councillor Halkiad Hadamida. That's noted. What, what I will also note um, to us all is that the delegation for choosing our footpaths and the conversations that happen there lie with our community board, so that'll be a really good conversation to take back to our community board. But it is um, our job as council that once they put through their recommendations to us to approve the budgets to allow that to happen. Uh, just that's where that sits there. Um, I've got a community board chair, Gardner. Thank you. Um, you were talking about the, the um, footpath that was formed by the community um, uh, that extended from Pukipoko Road up to Okuhu Road. That, is that what you're talking about? Oh, uh, you know, the one yeah, close to the colour? Just the one, yeah, yeah, just the metal one. But what happened was that was formed by the community and it had never had any work done on it. So what we did as a board was made that um, that footpath a, a council asset, put on the council register as an asset, so that council will upgrade it to a, a decent standard because it's, it's got so many weeds in it and mm -hmm. long grass and everything, so mm -hmm. it would be good to actually have it sort of inside. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Can, you point of order? Can point I just order? ask a point of order? Uh, we're actually on item 7.6, not item 7.5. So the correct mover was myself and the correct Oh, mover. sorry. Um, You're absolutely right. Thank you for that. Yes, yeah, that is correct. And so, in terms of my speaking order, <laughs> apologies to getting me distracted. I'm happy for you to speak to this item now. Thank you. What was I say? Oh, I just wanted to take the opportunity after all the um, mudslinging the ETA to um, congratulate them on identifying some quick win sections uh, with the community board. You know, there's those parts under the Kaikui, um list and filling two gaps with an existing footpath. And just um, highlight everyone that this contract is for um, the missing links. It, and it says in the um, compliance schedule that that's what it is. Um, and just yeah, show show some appreciation for the actual footpaths that are getting done because we weren't going to get any done in this um, three year period at all because we had our funding all pulled from um, Waka Kotahi mm. by Waka Kotahi. So kia ora. Thank you, Deputy Thank you. Man Stratford. Uh, I don't. I think it's a little bit powerful to call it mudsling, just highlighting some communication link areas that we have, <laughs> not just on the Northern Transportation Alliance's behalf, but on our own council and community board's behalf as well. Um, I haven't had any further indications of speaking rights. I'd just like to also add on your um, slowly filling up list here for briefings. I think a briefing is definitely in order around council and community board delegations and how that works would probably be helpful to come through to us. Um, Councillor Court, right of reply. Councillor Court. We'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Okay. Opposed? The motion is carried. Abstain. Abstention. I continue to oppose from earlier. Now, before <laughs> I close with Kamakira, uh, 
Thank you for a relatively <coughs> first council meeting for the year. Um, now, we all know that Cyclone Gabriel is uh, being monitored by Te Rato Ngatirurangi Met Service, just off the coast of New Caledonia. Um, and while Met Service are uh, still forecasting its potential landfall in New Zealand, obviously we have recently um, come through huge devastation in Auckland, um, a precautionary state of emergency for Northland. Um, so I'm just going to uh, afford our acting C Janice an opportunity to, to just uh, talk about some of the measures that we as the council will be taking place as we monitor the situation. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Um, obviously, I am in regular contact with our colleagues down in the North Region Council who operate the region on our behalf. Um, the latest information we've got is that the tropical cyclone is likely to go through a technical change of structure and will become an ex-tropical cyclone before it reaches New Zealand. Um, that doesn't mean that it's any less dangerous or that it doesn't, isn't going to result in some kind of impact. At the moment we are looking at warnings um, being issued on watches on Friday, potentially warnings on Saturday and potentially a red warning on Sunday. Um, but at the moment, um, as we've been saying all week on the weather, it just depends on the wiggles and things that it does as to where it goes and what it hits. Um, in terms of preparation here, we are making sure that we have clear um, roles and responsibilities identified for our EOC. So we're standing up our primary and secondary support in that space so that if it goes longer than 12 hours or eight hours, we've got backup to cover each other. Um, and we will stand up the EOC at the request of the NRC. So they drive the um, response first. And then when, if it becomes a local issue, they will ask us to stand up our EOC, the same as the Emergency Operations Centre. So um, that will be the same as we did a week or so ago in the previous warning that came through the norm. So just to reassure you, we do have the team ready on standby and ready to go. Um, and um, we're just waiting to see whether it wiggles and misses us. Thank you very much for that, Janice. I appreciate it. Um, I will close our meeting now and then I'm happy for members with any questions to come and approach staff in the space. But otherwise, um, please do stay safe. Uh, Civil Defence New Zealand have put out some really great preparations you can do before a storm comes on their uh, website and the social media I've seen. Things like securing your outdoor furniture and going through the checklist and things like that. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you everybody, those online and to all of our elected members and staff. For the meeting today, I will close us with a kākia. Um, kia tau, kia tātou, kia tātou, te atu whai o tō tātou aiki, o he ukraitsi me te aroho, te atu ar, me te whiwhi ngā tahi tāna ki te wairua tapu, āke, āke. Um, just confirm when our uh, live stream has ended. Thank you, Jamie.